Hi, this is Scott Rich from IBM. I'm the lead of the Jazz Foundation project. Uh, we provide the platform on which the rational Jazz products are built. And my challenge today is to give you an intro to Jazz licensing in 10 minutes. We'll start off looking at some of the basic concepts of Jazz licensing, and there's really two halves to Jazz licensing. Uh, the first is a server license. This determines the trial and permanent state of the server. Um, when you install any of our uh, Jazz-based products, whether it's a download or off the media, it starts in trial mode and they're activated by installing the activation kit, which includes the server key. The server license also includes uh, the control of the capacity and capabilities of the server. So it determines things like the maximum users that the server will support and configuration options like the databases that are supported for that product edition. The second half of Jazz licensing is the client access license. And this is the part that's a little more interesting and a little bit more dynamic. Uh, the client access license is what controls the actions that a user can perform. So when a request comes in, it's associated with a given user, and we look to see the licenses that are assigned to that user, and that'll determine whether or not they're going to be allowed to perform that action. So client access licenses, or CALs, can be assigned specifically to one authorized user, uh, or you can allow a user to borrow a floating license from a pool of available licenses. Uh, products will offer different CALs, and those CALs will provide different capabilities and differentiate different classes of users. So our demo scenario today is going to use Rational Team Concert 2.0 as an example jazz-based product. Um, we're going to pretend that we've purchased two copies of Rational Team Concert 2.0 standard edition server. And then for our users, we've purchased 1,000 authorized user contributor licenses. Those are going to be used to support our test and support community. And then for our development team, which is uh, in this imaginary scenario, just like in real life, is spread around the world, um, we've bought 100 floating developer cows. Um, floating is interesting for this worldwide team because floating licenses can be shared across time zones. When one time when one team leaves, they'll give up their floating licenses. The next team comes in, they can pick those up. Um, so teams working around the world can um, get more mileage out of floating licenses. So let's take a quick look at the uh, Rational Team Concert Product Edition. So here we're looking at the download page for um, Rational Team Concert Milestone 2.0 RC1. Um, and you see now we have four editions that we talk about here. So we saw, you see Express C, Express, Standard, and the new Enterprise Edition. Um, and you can see here the kinds of implications of these editions and the licenses that they support. Um, they all come in, in the trial license. And you see here some of the server quality of service differences that are, are controlled by the different product editions and the licenses associated with those. This picture should help explain the scenario that we're going to demonstrate today. Here we have our primary Jazz Team server. It's going to be our floating license server, and it's going to support two users. Brenda, uh, who's a tester, is going to get an authorized contributor license. Scott is a developer. He's going to get a floating developer license. So they're working directly with Team Concert here in this server in North America. We have a second server, Jazz 2, over here in Europe, and we have a developer working off of that, Mike. He's going to be a, um, given a floating developer license. So when he logs into Jazz 2, it's going to make a request to check out a license from the floating license server, Jazz. Jazz is going to issue that license, and Jazz 2 will hold on to that and will authorize Mike to access developer capability um, as long as his session lasts. OK, so let's see how Jazz licensing works in action. Uh, we're in the admin web UI for my Jazz Team server instance, and we're going to switch into the license key management tab, take a look around here. If you look at the current state of this server, we can see that it is the standard edition Jazz Team server, which has a server limit of, of 250. We can see it's in a trial state, and it's going to expire in 72 days. This has the uh, early access key. So the first thing we're going to do is to make this a permanent server. I know that I've purchased my uh, server activation kit, and I've saved it here in RTC 2.0 keys. So we're going to install that. The server takes a look at it, recognizes this, and says, yes, that'll change us to a permanent state. And you see that is uh, reflected here in, this, in the status as we come back. Next thing we're going to do is install our, our CAL uh, activation kits. So we, remember, we purchased a pair of those. We got our um, contributor key, which is an authorized user key. We'll install that. In fact, we purchased 1,000 of those. So we'll go ahead and tell the system about that. And then we purchased 100 of our floating uh, developer keys. So we'll do that, too. Now, you notice that the system recognized that that was a floating key. And it was the first one that we had installed. So it's going to turn that capability on automatically in the server. And if I move ahead, you can see, in fact, that I can choose to allow this server to be a floating license server 
um, to other servers, other Jazz servers in my network. So we're going to do that in this in this case. So as we finish, we'll see that those two um, cows are updated. We see our thousand uh, contributor keys are available here, and we could uh, go ahead and assign some of those. And then we see that we have uh, 100 floating developers available as well. Okay, now let's assign some of those cows that we just installed. We're going to switch over to user management and then client access license management. The rational team construct contributor is the cow that we want to work with first. So we have a thousand of these. None of them are assigned yet. And we're going to assign uh, one of these to Brenda Breaker. She's our lead tester. So there you go. We've, we've assigned that. Now we're going to go over and assign um, one of the floating developer keys to myself on this system. So there I am. And there we've assigned one of those. And those changes are effective immediately. So you can see we've now got um, one um, authorized user um, contributor cal assigned and one floating. Now you see there's no mention of um, available here because floating license usage is managed on a um, as-needed basis. So as users are working with the system, license is checked out. The assignment of a license doesn't consume a license. That only happens when the user actually is um, accessing the system and, and using that function. So if we go back to our license management page, we'll see these updates are taking place and we get our overview. We see out of our thousand contributor license available, one's been assigned and 999 are available. In order to really see floating licenses in action, we need to look at an active system. We can look at the issued um, licenses, but we can also look at reports. And so to do that, we're actually going to switch over and look at the um, reports on jazz.net. So this is the admin console for the server at jazz.net, which actually supports our own development. We're looking at a report here of the uh, team concert floating developer usages from April 1st until today. And what we get is a graph here that shows uh, a pretty interesting trend. So we do have a team that spans uh, at least 12 time zones. But you see we have a very distinct peak every every workday. So you can see our five workdays at each week. You can actually see over the last three weeks, as we've brought uh, the Rational Quality Manager and Rational Requirements Composer teams online, that the floating license usage has, has uh, increased from a baseline of around 80 to somewhere between 120 now that we're actually supporting multiple teams. The other thing that we can do to monitor license usage is we can look at the uh, issued floating licenses. So in this case, we're looking at the floating developer licenses. We can switch over and look at floating contributor also. And what we're seeing is at any point in time, the users that are online, the operation that they use that cause them to get a license checked out, and how long until that license is freed up. So this gives us an idea of, of what's happening on the system at any time. Um, just more detail behind the reports that we saw a second ago. Okay, the last thing I want to show is how my second Jazz Team server can connect to my first and use that as a floating license server. So users connect, connected to this second server will be able to check out licenses from that pool of 100 that we installed on the first server. So you see I'm looking at the admin web UI for my second server, Jazz 2. Um, it's uh, also a standard edition. It ha has a maximum user limit of 10 because I'm running this on Derby for the demo. But it is a permanent server. And you'll see it's not connected yet to any floating license server. But we'll go ahead and connect it to my, my first server. So one thing that you'll notice is my uh, typical URL for a server is an HTTPS connection. Um, we're going to come in through the HTTP um, connection and port 9080 for uh, floating license purposes. We'll test that. And you can see that's successful. So we'll finish that. So you can see we now get feedback that we're connected to a floating license server. We have no acquired floating licenses yet. So let's go and assign uh, some keys to uh, one of our users. So you can see we've, we've got access now to the floating developer license that was available from that floating license server. We never installed this on uh, this second server instance, but because of the connection to the Jazz to the floating license server, it's available. We can assign that. We know there aren't many on this server, so Mike Hacker is our developer. He's going to get access to that. OK, so that's the end of the demo. Um, hopefully, this gave you a good idea of the basic ideas of jazz licensing, and also a little bit of a feel for how licenses are administered um, and how powerful the floating license capability is of the jazz team server. Thanks.
Bye.